Hello everyone, Devon is now generally available. I don't actually know what Devon is, if I'm honest. Saw it in an article, thought I'd do a video. Uh, there's a couple of videos embedded in here that we're going to watch and react to, and then maybe try out the tool. I know it's like an AI thing. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I've not got an account or anything. I might need to do that. I wonder if I can actually see if I can sign up. Okay, cool. It looks like I'll be able to sign up with just my Google. So, Devon is available now. This is December 10th, a couple of days ago. Uh, today we're making Devon generally available, starting at $500 a month for engineering teams, which includes no seat limits. So I think that's like number of employees, I guess. Uh, so why does it keep saying generally available? Is that like a thing? Uh, it's a weird phrase. It doesn't sound very good to me. It's generally available. Um, but anyway, onboarding session. Nice. Or engineering. Okay. So that's app.devin.ai. We'll need to sign up. I'll do that off screen in a moment. So where does Devin shine? Small front end bugs and edge cases. But let's be honest, ChatGPT can do that. Um, but I guess this is integrated with Slack. Uh, it would be interesting to see that. I don't even have a Slack account. Got oh, hiccups. Creating first draft PRs for backlog tasks. See, that's quite that's a cool idea actually. Yeah, I like that. God, that would really speed up development because not only do you know exactly where to kind of look at the code. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that's actually done. Like, is that just like a code, or has it got knowledge of your code base? If it has knowledge of your code base, and it's like, it's we recommend a change like this and this far and this far, and um, that'd be really cool. Uh, yeah, I actually really like that. Uh, if it's just sort of like ChatGPT, then I don't think it's as good. I.e. like, okay, implement a table, for example. If it's just the code for that and you still have to sort of do all of the other work yourself, it's probably, it's okay, but I would just use ChatGPT uh, personally. Uh, making targeted code refactors, uh, VS Code forks, blah, blah, blah. So it's help given Devon... Give Devon tasks that you know how to do yourself. Tell Devon how to test or check its own work. Okay. That's quite cool as well. Break down large tasks. That's always useful. Uh, I think the key thing is here. Can this like, integrate with your actual code base? I think that's what we're missing. Uh, I think there's definitely people trying to do this with tools. But I think the key thing is like having your actual code base integrated and the AI, uh, whatever you want to call it, being fully integrated and understanding where everything is and how it all works together. Uh, so let's have a look at this. Every single time you want to do an integration now, the new workflow is Devin does the first leg of the integration. integration. And Devin actually gets all the docs. Let's Every start. single time you want to do a new integration now, the new workflow is Devin does the first leg of the integration. And Devin actually gets all the docs, all the API keys. And we say, uh, Devin, here's the workflow we want you to follow. Go figure it out. And Devin will run into all the issues that our developers have actually run into um, you know, if we ask them to do, do it, uh, Devin is going to basically write the email that I'm going to want to send to the partner to say, hey, can you please give me some clarity on this part of the request or this part of the response or, you know, why doesn't your authentication work? And so I dumped the documentation that they emailed me. I basically said, hey, Devin, I'm looking to integrate, a, a test a set of API endpoints. Okay. Um, I was very specific about try all these endpoints, please. It's a lot of information. Kind of like chain these together into a workflow and let me know if it works. And then you can see here, you know, by the end of the day, it had found one problem. I'm trying to test the message sending functionality, but the order remains in finding appraisers. Uh, it said, hey, we are waiting for someone inside the software to do something. I went in the software and did it. And then it had an entire notebook. And I would say Devin probably saved me at least 100 hours trying to debug you know, their APIs. Since we figured this out uh, about a month ago, not even a month ago. I feel like 100 like hours is a exaggeration, with but Devin. still. And every single time, it's like the second time I actually thought Devin probably was doing something wrong. And it turned out that no, the partner gave us the wrong API key. Uh, so I was like, Devin, why can't you figure this out? And Devin was right and the partner was wrong. It really, where it's super differentiated and there's magic is my product team is now using customers Devin's always wrong. Their API integration. My implementations team, when they get you know documentation from a customer about some custom endpoint um, that we've got to hit up the customers, they're using Devin to, to you know roadmap that, that stuff out. If you're going to tell Devin to stand alone, you've got to try and do your best 
to put it in circumstances where it's going to succeed. Yeah. Just like you would like a human engineer, right? Like, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. You can't just expect AI, or if you want to keep calling it that software, to be magic. You have to sort of, it's a tool, and you're trying to set up a tool in the best way for it to be useful. That's like ChatGPT is the same thing, you know, in the sense that, you know, if you ask it bad questions or you give it bad information uh, or you lack context, it's not going to give you great answers. I know I keep calling it AI, but it just seems to be the easy thing to call it, even though it's probably a bad thing to call it. From a quality perspective, that's reliable, that's performant. But I think the exact nuances and edges of the user experiences are a place where, um, frankly, I think product managers and designers and people have been able to be a little bit, uh, I don't want to say negligent, but they haven't had to be as rigorous previously as they maybe will have to in the future. And that's just the thing that I see over and over with Devin, is I can assume that, you know... I love how Google keeps calling it Devin. I guess there's no hard way to distinguish. I engineer knows the user a little bit, and so they can, you know, kind of bend the edges, or like smooth the edges out. Um, and I think that we'll have way more software. It'll be way better on all technical specs. So, I do like that. I mean, third party integration is, I think, just generally something you hate in software engineering because you just want to focus on your stuff, right? And the third party integration is the stuff you don't want to waste your time. Like they're usually useful things you want, like a Stripe uh, API integration. Uh, that's just something you need, you know, if you're selling something, um, but you don't want to waste all your time doing that. So I think it's really cool that I can go through and try and do the whole integration. And it was even able to say that, look, the, the key's probably wrong and it was right. Uh, so definitely useful there. Uh, yeah, it's, it looks like, yeah, I feel like that we've got great tools. It's just about integration now. Although I think even ChatGPT has loads of tools. I've not actually looked at any of them, to be honest. I only use ChatGPT and not their library of sort of other tools. So hand off async work to Devin directly from your IDE. Uh, the Devin extension, some VS code, allows you to check Devin's PRs and review. That's also good. It doesn't just automate. It's, it's kind of cool. I'm Marvin. Also, five hundred dollars a month. Really, if it's a really good tool, it's really not a lot of money. What are these adverts? Peppa Pig. Yeah, that's a quite an easy thing to do, I think. Like, ChatGPT wouldn't struggle with that at all. Obviously, the key, I know I keep saying that, but obviously the key difference is the integration. My hands are in the wrong place, which is why I'm typing like an absolute idiot. It. It referred to uh, as junior developer as an it. Understandable. And then like very eager working at everything all the time. And I feel like us as engineers, we can actually focus on the problems that excite us instead of just Yeah, that's that's what I was saying about like third party integration. You just want to focus on your idea, the thing you're working on. Um we're saying, showing sessions where Devin resolves issues on a few of our favorite open source repositories. That's quite cool. I like that. Um, first session. 
I wonder if I can just view this. There's a lot going on here. Is this a video? It's not even a... I don't know where to look. This is all a bit overwhelming. Uh, so I think, I guess this is the starting point. Hi, please figure out a good solution for this issue. That's quite cool. Make sure to read the spec. Use the local copy of the inspector repo. Um, the spec... Okay, you read the spec. Use a local copy of the inspector repo. That's this repo. Uh, can I actually see the code? Okay. Is there a video? And then, so yeah, this is the issue. What is inspector does not properly respect capability negotiation. Okay, and then this explains how it works. See, that's impressive. So you can make an issue on GitHub and it integrates with the whole repository. That's really cool. I'm sure there's like other tools out there like this. I feel like there's a bit of a race at the moment from all of these. So it's probably not, as cool as it is, it's probably not unique and it's about who's got the best product. Uh, and at the end of the day, as long as you've got customers, you don't need to be the best product. You just need to have customers. Because once they're sort of integrated with your system, um, unless it's something, there's something that's really bad, they're not just going to move away. So the key thing is always is just having customers. Uh, so as long as it's good, which it does look good, um, it doesn't really matter. So here's a Google JWT thing. It's a bit confusing. Which part is part of what? GitHub, Inspector. Okay, so it'd be like this one. Our JW2 string validator. Oh yeah, and I wanted to see the fix actually. So let's look at files changed. So it goes in and adds, so it's TypeScript, JWT, add some tests, uh, add some types. Yeah, and I mean all of this, you know, I'm going to say it again, uh, ChatGPT could do, but you know, you'd have to manually ask it and copy and paste the code and this definitely speeds up development uh let's see what else can we look at oop i don't even know where i was i think it's because i didn't click open a new tab pretty cool i might um what i'll do is i probably won't do it in this video let's do i'll just call it tools one the, the name of these folders are absolutely terrible uh, I used to have a tools for review tab, uh, bookmark folder, but I didn't get around to, yeah, $500 a month. I guess that's the only thing. Can I test it without spending $500 a month? That would be the cool thing. I always think, you know, I don't expect everything to be free. Like, you do need to make money, but it would be nice if you could sort of test it at least. Uh, but yeah. That's it. So that's Devin. You can have a look at that if you're interested. And I think it looks quite cool.